Uh, so let's start. Last week, being I've been doing code reviews and investigated the difference and the pros and the cons of the of the system metrics and uh, and our own um, performance counters. Probably we we could discuss it in in more details hmm? after the meeting. And also discuss with Shihan on his PR of a 39772. I'm pasting the URL in the chat window. Mm, um, I review Sam's uh, PR and uh, modify the proof counters PR according to the comments and rebase it uh, based on Sam's PR. And uh, and uh, I found that um, there are some uh, segmentation fault in uh, OMAP uh, manager unit test still debugging on it. Uh, it is in the master branch. I'm not sure what the segment fault uh, caused by the later PR, or it is maybe already has the segmentation fault. But uh, when the patch merged in, I it passed my test, and I think it already passed the when the patch merged in is already i think the system is already tested but currently i found that there is there is a, a segment fault so no debug on it can you manage to 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 bisect the offending change which caused the uh a sex fault i i can't i don't know there are so many patch merged in and uh, it, it, i found it just because when i rebased my PR, a proof counter PR, I try to run the unit test and it is unit test segment about. Oh, that's funny. I mean, does it say fault every time? Pardon, Sam? Is the seg fault reproducible? Yes, it's reproducible. So does it happen without wait, your PR? Uh, when I first uh, provided uh, the perf conscious PR and uh, I tried uh, all the unit tests, it uh, passed. I mean, it's now, never... if you take if you take the commit you're based off of from master and just run that one, does it say fault? Uh, the master branch, uh, there is a segment fault. Not apply my PR change. without yes. my change. Because um. I mean, make check just passed for me. Uh -huh. Pardon? Make check just passed for my PR. Also oh, based on master. So you you do the unit test on the or my upper manager. It, and it make check runs all of them. It passed the right? right now. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, but currently. Mm, branch master branch. I'm not sure. Maybe my something wrong with my environment. But I uh, the system will test all the unit tests right when the PR merge in. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's still worth working out why it's happening though, if you can. Which is exactly it's something... billing test are, are you are you looking at? Uh, you uh, on my manager you need a test. Um, you need a test on that manager dashes. Yes. So, so if, if it's specific... it passed a system a system um, test, uh, maybe something wrong in my environment. Or the uh, or your environment is just better at triggering the bug. Like, <laughs> no, no, I'm 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 sort of not kidding. There's non-determinism in the way the schedule okay. works. So it could be that there's some happenstance of the timing in your system that makes the bug more more likely. Oh, man. That's not uncommon. So if you can debug it, that would be helpful because we may not be able to reproduce it anywhere else. Oh, okay, so let's, not easily. Yeah, let's do I also on didn't it. see the issue in my environment. Yeah, I'm running it right now, and it looks like it's. You see, you already you you have already seen it in your environment. I haven't seen any issues. Oh, you haven't seen. Okay. Yeah. Myself either. I'm running it right now, and it appears to be okay. Ah, uh, okay. So in your environment, it's all okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> but issue? I. I, I don't have your PR, and like I said, it could be just a difference in timing. Like the just existence the of a branch, crash. Just the current master branch. Uh, right. Yeah, well, so that I mean, passed your test, right? 
you're quite sure that you rebuilt it with Master? Yes, I rebuilt it uh, several times. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you can work out what's happening, that would be good. Capture it in GDB okay. might help. Okay. Actually, I just wanted, wanted to double check with you. Is this the test you are looking at? Do you need dash FR tree on the manager? No, OMAP manager. OMAP, OMAP manager. Man, okay, OMAP manager. Yeah, I still try to ah. run the C store. Uh, I can start up the C store. And but uh, when I do the create pool and uh, set pool, uh, it crashed. Yeah, I kn we 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 know about some bugs in the Onode manager. So at this point, the status is you can literally start Onode manager, but yes. it's going to crash. Crash in quickly. Onode manager, yes. But that's perfectly okay. That's just where we are right right now. So the next step is to start identifying those bugs and fixing them. So that's um, all from me. Yeah. Um, Greg? Sorry, I'm still just listening in. Okay, probably next time. Uh, oh, cool. What did you say? Whom? Greg Whom did you call? Oh, oh you. you. Okay, I thought so. Uh, hi. I'm uh, uh, working on uh, the Scrubber backend, both classic and uh, uh, Crimson, and that's more or less it. And a few minor fixes and bugs. Sam? All right, so a pull request merged that makes vstart able to actually start an OSD with CStore. It mostly crashes, though. So that's progress. Um, I've got a pull request up that I hopefully will merge in a few minutes once the test pass that adds both Blue Store and C Store to Crimson Store NBD, the network block device adapter for just doing basic testing. Um, the main use here is that it's less annoying to crash C Store using Crimson Store NBD than by starting up an OSD. So that's how I plan to do the next phase of uh, debugging. So the bug that we're running into right now with C Store is that the Onode manager doesn't handle conflicts correctly uh, because any of the extents under it might get might become invalid um, at any time. Um, realistically, this is sort of really inconvenient actually for consumers with transaction manager interface, and it's a consequence of the way I'm doing conflict detection. So the way it currently works is that every time a transaction reads an extent, it gets placed into the transaction's read set. And upon commit, we iterate over the read set and check whether any of the extents have been invalidated. If they haven't, then it's safe to commit. Um, this is correct as far as it goes, but it means that during execution of a transaction, any of the read or write state might be operating on invalid extents that have been, uh, well, replaced which means that the read snapshot you get isn't strictly speaking consistent. It's sort of harmless because the transaction won't commit. So anything stupid it does in the meantime won't be able to affect anything else. But it does make the logic that implements that code um, hard to get right. So I'm going to replace that system with a system where every extent has a pointer to an intrusive linked list of all transactions referencing it. And when we invalidate an extent, we will walk that list to invalidate all of the transactions referencing it directly using a Boolean on the transaction itself. Then all of the code in DStore will be converted to use interruptible future to check the invalidation state of the, tra of the transaction. That should basically eliminate this entire category of bug and basically make all of the consumers of the transaction manager interface able to ignore it. Um, it'll be a minor amount of work, but hopefully it'll just like solve the problem completely. Is this a long-term solution? To, no, I'm going to, to do this right now. I'm okay. going to do that like the next couple of weeks, however long it takes to get it done. I think it's the biggest, most immediate problem, and I want to I want to spend as little time writing code against the current way transaction manager works as possible, because it's become a problem. So I don't want to fix it. Okay, um, but I think it'll simplify things too. Uh, later on, we will do this right in the, for example, the the consumers of the transactions. So the it should be proactively 
check the con uh, confliction before applying a, a transaction, right? No, how could it possibly do that? No, I, I mean, I think probably the long-term solution is to to check the invalid extents before 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 moving on and retry if that's the case instead of doing so in a transaction manager and invalidate no. the transaction. No, doing it, it, we we're not really doing it in transaction manager by converting all of the users to use um by converting all of the users to use interruptible future. It'll essentially be doing what you're describing. Every time ah, anything sure. in C store suspends and comes back, the first thing it's going to do is check the boolean on the transaction. It just won't have to do it on purpose. Okay. That's Does better. that make sense? Yes. So did, that helps us to hide the hide the details. Correct. Underneath of the uh, in, uh, the then interpret then. Okay. Right. Even better. So it'll 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 happen essentially when you're describing, but you won't have to write code to do it. It'll just happen. It'll be embedded in the error rater type uh, exposed from transaction manager. Are you going to expand the uh, iterator, interrupt the interrupt the iterator, or or add another layer of, 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 on top of it? I'm hoping to just use the interruptible future mechanism we already have. That was the point. Okay, that's a really like we we. Created one for the OSD, right? And it, it includes error rater functionality, correct? Yes. Then yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm Mount going to expand it. all of the error rater types in Transaction Manager will be replaced by interruptible future types. Mm. Okay, cool. That should be possible, right? Am I missing yes, something? Yes, I think it's it's cool. extensible. Johan, are you are you with us? Well, I mean, I'm just I'm doing I'm using them the same way the OSD does, just with different errors. Yes. And a different, um, well, check function, but that's definitely pluggable from what I could see. Yes, that's also my understanding. Well, uh, does it mean we need to change the state then to interruptible then everywhere? Sorry, what's up? Does it mean we need to replace state then by interruptible then? everywhere in our current code? No, just in C-Store. This is just something I'm talking about for within C-Store. Uh, for example, the ONOG? Exactly. I'll just do it, though. It should be a global find and replace. With luck, it should be completely transparent. I'll talk to you if it turns out to be hard, or I'll create a stub and then let you convert FL tree or something like that. But I think it's straightforward. Oh, I Essentially, it. everywhere we currently like every everywhere that FL tree pauses and comes back is an IO function it's invoking on transaction manager. That's yeah. literally all of it, right? Mm -hmm. So every in every one of those cases, by replacing the uh error rater type with an interruptible future type, when it comes back, it will transparently check the state of the transaction and it'll propagate an E again error from that point. So I don't think it should have any impact on your code, except that it won't be possible to observe an invalid ex extent. What do you mean there is no interrupt, internal interrupt during the tree operation? Uh, there are, it's just... but it's at the exact places where you perform reads or writes using Transaction Manager, right? But, but, but the read and write will return E again. Correct. Right now. So I can get it and. Uh, you mean we cannot differentiate and, and the, the internal again from the again from from return conflicting recent recent con, con, uh, transactions. Those are right? the same thing. Right now, e again is always used to indicate a conflict. Yeah, we already already have that. That's so. already what it, what it means in C store. So that's not a problem. Is there something you're worried about needing to clean up, Yingzhen? Yeah, because this means that uh, tree tree operation could be interrupted or com com complicated. It no, could not be you should interrupted be using right finalies now. and destructors to make it automatically clean up. Yeah, so that's a current problem. So what I need to do next is is, is to make it possible. Ah, uh, I see. So yes, that's what you should be doing in the background. 
um, arrange for absolutely every call to, in a transaction manager to tolerate an E again. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what I need to do next. Okay, yeah, that's 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 true. Yeah, because current asserts will not back this. Yeah, hopefully that should be mostly it though, because the the entire the entire architecture is that when we get an E again, we zip all the way back out to the function that called into C store. Pretty much, yeah. and we dump all that state and call its destructors, completely blast yeah. it, and start over from scratch. So hopefully, it should be just a matter of making sure that you're not holding any locks or resources or anything like that, and that it's, all of your destructors operate correctly under those conditions. Yeah, it's, it's mostly about the resource. Yeah. Destruction validation. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, and I'll work on. So, and there will be some other advantages. The the read set right now is like really naive. It uses like a literal STL map, which is exactly as inefficient as it sounds because it's allocating in the background. So, converting it to this will mean we're using intrusive list members that are pre-allocated as part of the transactions. So, we'll avoid that level of allocations, which which should make it faster. And we avoid having to walk the read set in transaction submit because if the transaction isn't invalid yet, then obviously the um, obviously all of the uh, extents are still alive. Anyway, that's what I'm working on. Uh, I think you're muted, Kifu. Oh, there you go. Thank you, Sam. Shihan. Oh, uh, last week I modified the PR uh, for optimizing the client request pipelining, uh, and I'm now uh, working on implementing uh, the extend placement manager. Uh, that's all. All right, Yixin. Mm, yeah, for, for the note, uh, Chi, uh, last week the system integration is, is merged and I, I worked on some cleaning ups and uh, I plan to work on the error handling part uh, this, this week. And uh, I, I also tried to understand the Blue Star Allocator solutions and uh, how they are re reusable in C store and uh, uh, reviewed the random block manager design and also Shihan's uh, placement manager. That's all for me. Uh, you exist, there's a pull request for the random block manager as well, if you're interested. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I see that. I'd be interested in your input. I'd... Mm -hmm. Have all, I have some sense for where I want to go with it, but I think we need, I think you and Joy Han should take a look at it. And okay. Come to some sure. sort of a consensus with um, Young One. Okay. I would take a look. Anything, what do you mean by error handling in specific? It's, it's to handle E again and interrupt okay, operations. But uh, it's it, what we described. It's essentially being robust to any of the IO calls propagating any again. Is this is the work overlapped with what what Sam is planning to do? No, not really. About yeah. Okay. It's mostly about the, the, the destruction process to to tolerate. E again. My work changes the way in which we decide to propagate an E again, but the end result is the same. An E again gets propagated. So from that point of view, stage FL tree has to do the same thing either way. Okay. Before concluding the meeting, I I wanted to to bring bring up the uh, discussion regarding the the system column column metrics versus uh, perf counter. I I I read I I brought this up in last stand up last night, but I really want to have your opinion on on this for me because you are you you are the one working on perf counter and the which. And the PR which bring brings the perf counter to into C star C store. The reason why I think the C star metric is superior from the perf from the from the feature perspective 
is that a C-star um, matrix has a has built-in support large chart. Each matrix has a label named has a name has a label named chart, whose value is the chart number. That's the built-in support of the matrix. In addition to that, we are allowed to attach more labels to to each matrix. For example, the uh, the pigeon numbers, and the if if that that if we are looking at some some slow request metrics, and uh, and we can also apply labels of them. For example, the denotes the device ID or the device the type of device to to the I the I/O number of the device storage device or the delays total number of the delay on such kind of device. So I think that will be that would be very helpful in future for for looking into the performance of the of a crimson. What do so, you think? So we're current for counters. If we wanted to dump writes done by the OSD, we would create like a single writes counter and just increment it every time a write happened, and then dump that via whatever mechanism when requested. With CSTAR metrics, we'd be able to further annotate each of those updates by PGID and shard ID, right? So if we wanted to get the total writes done by a single shard, we could query that dimension, or we could query based on a single PGID. Is that correct? Um, not exactly. Actually, at each matrix is a, is a represented by a lambda, which returns, which could return a, a reference of number, or it could be calculated. The number could be calculated on the fly. And each lambda is attached by a set of labels and also the name and the group name of this uh, metric. So at runtime, um, CETA offers the method allowing us to to dump, to query the, the, num the metric by its the group name and its, uh, its own name. But it does not allow us to, to query by labels. We need to have this have this feature in in an offline tool like Prometheus or our building manager module. Does it it's like, actually provide the integers that we increment, like perf counters do, or do we have to provide that functionality ourselves? I. I don't follow. Like when you when you set up perf counters, it actually does create the struct with the things we you know increment. The actual state it, that corresponds to the counters. Does it do that or? No. Actually, what we have, what what is building right in the metric is a lambda, which could re use to return a, a value, which is stored somewhere else. But it that value could be calculated on the fly, which could be. Yeah, but perf, yeah, but that's that's not the main thing perf counters do. The main thing perf counters do is they actually give us a means for storing those values. I don't really care about the querying part. Like, if we just dump all the numbers, that's all I care about. Perf counters yep. actually creates a struct in memory, in a per shard basis for what we have now, where we can just increment a counter. Like, if metrics don't provide that, then I don't think that's really relevant to this conversation right now. But I think it offers a way for us to to carry the numbers. But that, that very number is not stored right in the metric itself. It's stored somewhere else. But we can right. also... I'm saying perf counters is that place right now. That's yes, the thing perf yes. counters does. Yes. So it seems it's... to me we just implement perf counters, and then if we want to use C-star metrics to query them, we can do that. Ah. But so I don't, this doesn't seem to be a conflict with perf counters. I think we should just go ahead no. and implement perf counters. Perf counter, if we only use such, use perf counter as a storage of the metrics, that would be waste. I would prefer to just use a number for, for, for the number we are interested in, instead of using the perf counter, perf counter. So that means we need to design a module system and an interface for doing that, which is work. 
but that would be trivial. For example, if we were only interested in the delay, we can have a number attached to that's that's not really the point. The point is that we want a common way of doing this so that all of the code that increments a particular counter looks the same. That way, if someone's like, oh, I need a counter to count the number of reads, they don't have to go and implement a new thing. They just add another perf counter for reads and it's just there, right? There's no there's no extra step. Like perf counters are extremely I easy to use. And why, why would it be important for a consistent way for adding a, a number? For example, it's if important because that way people will do it. If you have to do actual work to add it, then it won't actually happen. Also, it's nice to be able to grep for everything that increments a perf counter. Like, it's just really convenient. It seems to me that C star metrics is intended to be a front end for a system written for a system to store the metrics. So if we want to write such a system, that's fine, but I don't really want to block this project on it. We have work to do. But, but in my opinion, it's a lot of, it, there won't be a lot of work for adding an adjust number. For example, if we, we are interested in the number of slow requests, we should always have a number somewhere for yeah, but if, okay, so let's say the number of the IO requests. Let's say I'm used to working in C store and I know how C store's metrics work, right? Yeah. And then I go look at the OSD and I need to, for whatever reason, I now need to know how many unfound objects there are. Is that a totally different layout with totally different struct names and conventions? How would I even find it? Like, I what want it to be the same. Find it, um, if, you, if you can just grab for the, for example, at at a counter, which is a in API exposed by uh, Crimson, oh, sorry, the system metrics, and you will find how the metric is 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 associated with a, a tangible variable right in C store or in Crimson. I'm skeptical, but if you think it's better, it's fine. Um, okay, I just think it would be very important for us for for have for having the building support for example the shard number without which it will be very difficult to, to track down the, the performance issues because it's a, by nature is sharded and well, we can imagine there are more use cases for 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 adding more labels to a given metric even though even though we have to do some offline processing to to group for example group group metrics by, by PG number or group by a shard or given group by a device. So I think the proof counter has uh, something uh, similar. Uh, proof counter has a name. So the name with the shard ID. And uh, um, so each shard can have the different uh, proof counter instance. Proof counter collections, right? Yeah, no, I mean, you can do collection is just one, one collection, and you register the perf counter into the collection. So each perf counter on different shard has different name, the name with the shard ID. And then we can ID define the perf counter. That's not the, I, I don't think a label is the necessary, it's the important reason. I care the about the performance. C star so, metrics probably probably output, sorry, probably outputs those labels in a way that Prometheus is able to consume. And in Prometheus, it actually does matter. Prometheus will be able to tease apart those things into tuples of related stats, which yes. you can then do queries on. It's a valuable, yes. it's a valuable feature. It's not bad that I'm arguing so much. It mm. just seems like a lot, if it seems like a blocker for C store and we kind of need these counters. And I don't okay. really want every subcomponent doing whatever the hell they want in this area. I kind of want a common module system like perf counters created so that everyone uses them the same way. I want it to be very easy to grab for, and I don't want there to be a lot of freedom about the way the, tuple, the um, types are defined. Again, if you want to also expose a number as a metric, you have to use an API for, for exposing it. So I know. You can always grab that, that re Right, I know. I want it to be, I, I want the number itself, the state for it, to be stored in that struct, though. 
I want it to be initialized mm. there. And which we can do. We can just create a, a, a wrapper around C star metrics yeah. that yeah. exposes things to C star metrics, like the same way perf counters does, basically, but keeps the numbers yeah. inside the struct, which is fine. If that's what we want to do, that works. And I do think that's what we should do if we're using C star metrics. I really, again, don't want different components doing their own things here. Yes, that would be very thin wrapper around the. Yeah, there wouldn't be much to it, but we would need to agree on, on a list of it'll C -star be system metric. So um, I'm I'm fine with that, but you know, I don't I want, kind of want the metrics. Be must have at this very moment, right? I mean, it's there's a you're you're not. I mean, you're you're making a good point. The C star metric system is better. I do like the labels thing. That is valuable. And and, and it's not backed by atomic, which I think it's potentially good, it could hurt the former performance. I mean. True, but also incrementing perf, perf counters is probably never going to dominate or even manage one percent of our total CPU overhead. So true, but yeah, yeah, I'm with you. Yes. Um. So in other words, I'm I'm fine with it, but I I do want like I would like a perf counters like interface for interacting with it and defining them. Something where you you um. There's like a metrics collection defined on the comp thing that you just access, kind of like the perf counters one. You add counters to it with defined types, again, like perf counters and names. And then behind the scenes, the C star metrics adapter will add out the other labels that are C star specific, like label and like a Jarden node ID before exposing them to the greater C stars metric subsystem. Okay. Um, something like that I think would work well. So I guess right, that right. means, uh, Chen Mei, we should put that PR on the back burner until we get that work done, unless you're interested in taking a look. I think we we could have Chen Mei's PR merged, and later on we can convert it to, to use a, a system metric. But but Chen Mei, I I don't I don't really think that the, the perfect counter collection is is a replacement of a metric, a system metric because Using using each collect using a collection for each shard can also, can only enable us to using a single label for each metric. But uh, when it comes to the system metric, we are able to attach multiple labels in addition to the shard label to a metric, which would be very valuable for us. No, you could do that with perfect collections too. What you do is you define okay. a prefix format. And then make ah. it so that the adapter that connects to Prometheus. This is basically what C star metrics is doing. I I I bet. No. You, no. It's a, it's how it's exposed exposed the uh, labels to to collected D. I know. That's what I'm, that, what I'm what I'm telling you is. And then what I'm telling you is in that connector, you reparse out the 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 labels and expose them that way, via whatever mechanism Collect D likes to see them. But the Prometheus has building label support. I know. I'm saying people. when you when you actually emit the information to Prometheus, you reparse out the labels from the names. No, no, I disagree. Prometheus I mean, I'm not saying we should. Building support a label which does not encode the labels into the name. I know. It's more structured. Yeah. I'm saying we could put them into the name and then pull them ah, back yes. out. Yes, we could do that. That's like it's not it's not actually very difficult just to define a separate metric for each thing. That's very likely what C star metrics is doing in internally. Remember, it doesn't do its own aggregation, so all it needs to do is store a separate number or a separate instance for each of these label tuples. It can either store them as one string or it can store them as multiple strings. It doesn't really matter. Yes. We can always do this by encoding the labels yeah. into so, the name. But that, that, that's not I'm perfectly clear. happy to use the C star one. I just want to create some kind of wrapper around it so that it's uniform throughout the Crimson code base in its usage. Okay, I can I can do that to to see how it works. But I don't want it to be a broker for for Trimace change, but I don't I why okay. I'm advocating is that we should go in that go in that very direction in in midterm. Well, I mean, if we we do need perf counters, and as we so I actually think this is important. Like we 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 need counters in general because we're about as we start getting tautology tests to pass more often. Almost immediately, the next focus will be improving performance. Mm -hmm. And good metrics are like a really important component of doing that. So mm -hmm. I do think this is important. So I'm 
I, I, I think what we should do is go ahead and merge Shunmaze change and then also start working on C-star metrics. I think that's the right okay. combo. Cool. I mean, you know, time permitting, but I think that's about the right combo. Great. Cool. Um, oh, Rona was asking if you could share your present your slides of the. I mean, I think a link to the presentation got shared. I don't actually have a link to the slides. Didn't really clean them up for distribution. Is it important? There isn't a lot on them. It was they were interesting enough uh, that I wanted to use them. Uh, so uh, okay, I'll clean them up and then send you an email. Good, thank you. Anything else? Okay, thank you. And talk to you later. Have a good one. Bye. See you. See you. See you. Yeah. See you. Bye.